In this video, we're going to look at the parts of speech. If you're learning a second language, or if you're just trying to take your English to the next level, then you must know these parts of speech. Any tutors you have, or any books you have, will make reference to these parts of speech all the time. The parts of speech are adjectives, adverbs, conjunctions, interjections, nouns, prepositions, pronouns and verbs. So there are eight parts of speech. But before we continue, I just have to talk about a debate that is happening. Modern grammarians claim that there are nine parts of speech, and that is because they differentiate between determiners and adjectives. Don't worry about this for now. We will talk about that point when we get to the determiners section. So, this is going to be a simplistic overview of each of the parts of speech. Let's start with adjectives. Adjectives describe things. Here are some examples of adjectives. Big, yellow, angry. You can see that these are describing words. Let me show you some examples. Big pumpkin. Well, big describes the word pumpkin. Yellow helmet. The word yellow, which is an adjective, describes helmet. Angry man. The word angry, which is an adjective, describes man. So you can see that adjectives describe things. OK, let's clear that. Next, we have adverbs. Adverbs tell us about actions. Here are three examples of adverbs. Quickly, patiently and loudly. And now some examples. Rachel walks quickly. Well, you can see that the adverb quickly tells us about the action. John sat patiently. The adverb patiently tells us about the action. Paula and Dan spoke loudly. Loudly is our adverb and it tells us about the action. That was adverbs. Next, let's do conjunctions. Conjunctions join things. Here are three common conjunctions, and, or, and but. Let's look at some examples. An apple and a pear. Well, the conjunction and joins apple and pear. Good or bad? The conjunction or joins the words good and bad. Strong but stupid. The conjunction but joins strong and stupid. OK, let's move on to interjections. Interjections express emotions. Some examples. Yay! Ah! Really? In sentences. Yay! I passed my test. The interjection yay expresses joy. Ah! We have a problem. The interjection ah expresses dismay or sadness. Really? I did not expect that. The interjection really expresses surprise. OK, that was interjections. Next, let's do nouns. Nouns name things. Everything we talk about has to have a name so we can talk about it. Here are some examples. Which? Garlic. New York. I am a clever witch. So the noun witch 
is the word we use for this. Garlic smells. The noun garlic is the word we use for this. We live in New York. Well, the noun New York is the word we use for this. So nouns can name people, places or things. Now, before we continue, I want to go back to adjectives. Remember adjectives describe things. And these were our examples. Big pumpkin, yellow helmet, angry man. Well, look at these words. Pumpkin, helmet and man. Pumpkin is the word for this, helmet is the word for that and man is the word for that. They look a lot like nouns, and they are nouns. So that means we can now say something smarter about adjectives. Adjectives are words that describe nouns. Great, let's get back to nouns. Before we continue, look at this, clever witch. The word here highlighted in yellow is an adjective. It's an adjective describing our noun. Okay, we're starting to put this stuff together now. This is good. Let's keep going. Next, prepositions. Prepositions show relationships between words. Here are some examples. In, on and with. So, a mouse in the box. The preposition in shows the relationship between box and mouse. Lots of prepositions tell us where things are in relation to other things. They also tell us when things are in relation to other things. And that is something to keep an eye out for when you learn more about prepositions. Here is another example. A mouse on the box. The preposition on shows us the relationship between box and mouse. And here's another example. A hot dog with mustard. The preposition with shows us the relationship between mustard and hot dog. So, prepositions show relationships between words. Very often, that relationship is about positioning, but sometimes it is about time. Okay, I've used two examples with a mouse here and I did that on purpose because I want to show you this. When you're first learning about prepositions, you might want to think of them as anywhere a mouse could go. So in a box, on a box, between two boxes, among boxes, below a box, above a box, near a box, behind a box, in front of a box, beside a box, under a box. All of these words in red are prepositions. Notice that occasionally they're not one word, in front of. That doesn't happen very often, but just keep that in mind. So preposition, anywhere a mouse could go. Okay, enough about that. Let's move on. Next, pronouns. Now, pronouns replace nouns. Luckily, we've already done the point on nouns, so we know what a noun is. Here are some examples of pronouns. She, it, and they. Let's put up some sentences that just have nouns in. A witch sat on the broom. Garlic is too smelly for Joe. Paula and Dan love pizza. Let's highlight the nouns in these sentences. Which, broom, garlic, Joe, Paula, Dan, pizza. Before we replace these with pronouns, look what we have here. We have a conjunction. Remember conjunctions join words. So let's join those. Okay. 
Now let's write these again with pronouns. She sat on it. She is a pronoun. It replaces the noun which. It is a pronoun. It replaces the noun broom. Let's do the next one. It is too smelly for her. It, pronoun, replaces the noun garlic. Her, pronoun, replaces the noun Joe. And now the next one. They love it. They replaces Paula and Dan. It replaces pizza. So pronouns replace nouns. I should just warn you, there are lots of pronouns. And these ones that we've looked at are called personal pronouns. But there are other types as well. But let's just stick for now with the personal pronouns. Here's the whole list. We've only looked at these ones. But if you understand what I'm saying now, you must be aware of the others. And if you look at the headings, these are some headings for some lessons which you'll do later. But for now, let's continue. Let's get rid of that. Next, verbs. Verbs are actions. Run, talk, think. You can see that these are all actions. Even if they are mental actions. Okay. Dan runs home after work. In this sentence, the verb is runs. It's an action. He talks loudly on his phone. Talks is an action. It's a verb. We think that Dan is clever. Think. It's an action, but it's a mental action. Verbs are not always about running and jumping and dancing and writing. Sometimes they are about thinking or considering or guessing. So, actions that happen inside the head. Let's look at these verbs again. Runs is a physical action. Talks is a physical action. Think is a mental action. But look at this one. This is also a verb. But this time it's not an action. It's just the state of being. So, the very act of being is also a verb. In fact, it's a very common verb. It's the verb to be. And now I've put that in our box because it's a very common verb. In fact, it's the most common verb. So remember, verbs are actions, be they physical actions, mental actions, or a state of being. Let's clear some of that. Look at this word, loudly. Do you remember this from our other example? Look at the bottom. Paula and Dan spoke loudly. We saw this on our adverbs page. And remember, adverbs tell us about actions. But we now know the actions are verbs. In the bottom example, spoke is our action. It's a verb. Look at the top example. Walks is a verb. Quickly is an adverb telling us about a verb. And the next one. Patiently is an adverb telling us about a verb. Okay, we can now say something a bit smarter about adverbs. Adverbs modify verbs. Great. Let's keep going. And then we have our last one. Determiners. Remember I said that some people classify determiners as adjectives. They function in a very similar way to adjectives. But there are some technical differences which you can read about on the website. If you remember, 
Adjectives describe things. They describe nouns. Well, determiners specify things, nouns, or say how many. Well, here are some examples. The, his, and one. Now, in a minute, we're going to put these in a sentence, but not yet. I'm going to put up the original examples we had for adjectives. Big pumpkin, yellow helmet, angry man. And I'm now going to change these adjectives with determiners. So instead of big, we can have the. So the is a determiner. It specifies the pumpkin. It lets us know which pumpkin we're talking about. We're talking about the pumpkin that we all know about. Pass me the pumpkin is different to pass me a pumpkin. A and the are both types of determiner and they specify things. Let's go to the second one. The determiner his tells us which helmet. It specifies the helmet. Remember, determiners specify things. Let's look at the third one. We'll change the word angry to one. The determiner one, which is just a number, tells us how many. Remember, determiners specify things or say how many. All of the numbers are determiners. We could have said five men. So five is another example of a determiner because it tells us how many. There are lots of different types of determiner. And here are some examples. We're not going to talk about this now. But as you learn more about English grammar, these are some of the subjects that you are going to cover. All of these are determiners, and there are lots of others under these categories. We just covered these three. Okay, let's get back. And let's clear that. So we have now covered all nine or eight if you want to categorize determiners as adjectives, parts of speech. But I don't want to leave you with a blank slide. I want to leave you with a summarizing slide. We have covered adjectives. They describe things. Well, they describe nouns. We have covered adverbs. They tell us about actions. Well, actually, they modify verbs. We have covered conjunctions. They join things. We have covered determiners, and I've now put those as number four, so you're getting these in alphabetical order. And determiners specify things, or say how many. Remember, some people classify those as adjectives. We have covered interjections, which express emotions. We have covered nouns, the words we use for people, places, or things. We've also covered prepositions that show relationships between words, especially when talking about where things are. But remember, they're also common in saying when things are. In January. On Saturday. Before the summer, for example. And we've covered pronouns. Pronouns replace nouns. Wait a minute. We seem to have some nouns there. Let's replace them with pronouns. Janet becomes she. Dog becomes it. Bill and Ben becomes they. That's better. Pronouns. And we've also covered verbs. Verbs are actions. They are physical actions like run and walk, but also mental actions like think. And remember, they are also states of being, which is why I added the verb be, the most common verb in English. 
Okay, that is everything I want to say about the parts of speech on this video. There is a link to the lesson on Grammar Monster in the description. And you will see that we have more detailed lessons and videos and tests on all the parts of speech. Thanks for watching. Good luck with the rest of your English study.